Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Thias. I have around 5,000 hours playing DayZ and around 2,000 hours mod in the game. I wanted to create a tutorial series uh, to try and help others get involved in the modding community. And uh, this series will start with the basics and maybe get on to more in-depth modding techniques as it progresses. In episode 1 we'll look at the basics and what you'll need to get started on your modding journey. And this will start with the tools required and how to set them up. Okay then, let's get into this. First thing we're going to do is install Daisy Tools. To do this, open up Steam. In your library, scroll down to Daisy. If you don't see Daisy Tools listed, just click on the drop down box at the top. Checkbox Tools, and you should see it there. Click on Install, and once that's installed, I'd recommend right click in, Manage, Add Desktop Shortcut for ease of access. Once that's installed, you should, um, you should now have this desktop icon. Open it up and you'll be presented with this window. There's a few settings we need to change in order to get everything running as we want it. So first we're going to click on settings. If you hear anyone talking about modding in Daisy, you'll hear them talking about your P drive. The P drive is a virtual drive that the game registers in order to set up your paths in your configs, models, images, things like that. You can change your path to the project drive. This is a local directory where these files will be stored and you can change that if you have a different hard drive with more space because it does take up quite a lot of space you just uncheck default look go to the location where you want it installed and you're done i like it default no problem part of the game directory is quite important this is where the files will be pulled from when you unpack them to find this back into steam right click on daisy manage browse local files you'll be presented with a window and this is your path to your local files just copy that back to the tools and paste it in here default is the location i've got here but if you've got it installed on a different hard drive then you'll need to update this automatic amount of the p drive a project drive start up of tools i have this selected because it saves you having to go back through every time you open the tools and mount the p drive so that once that's done click on apply and you're good to go now uh, you can check your launcher you can have daisy tools run on startup you can have it start minimized that's personal preference it's up to you now if we look at the tools we've been presented with some further options you can see here I've got dismount P drive. That's because I've got my settings set to my automatic mount on the project drive start with tools. This is up to you. The first thing you're going to need to do is extract the game files that allow you to inspect different elements of the game. So things like clothing, models, config files, scripts, everything that makes the game. So if you click on extract game data, you'll be presented with a DOS window and this can take a few minutes to do. Sometimes it can freeze. Wait it out. If it doesn't work, then just close the window and do it again. So as you can see here, it's telling me the game directory is what we've set and the destination is where we want our local files to be stored. I'm not going to do this because I've already done it. So I'll let you crack on with that for a moment. Okay, so once your game files have extracted, just double check the tools option to see that this says dismount drive P. If it doesn't, it'll say mount drive P. Just click on that and that will initialize the virtual drive. Then in your system, if you go to this PC, you should find local disk P listed here. I right click on that and I pin to quick access just so I can get ease of access to it up in this top corner here. If you look in the P drive, you will see all the game files extracted. The only difference being is you won't see this PBO folder. This is somewhere where I pack my PBOs to. And again, it's just for ease of access for me to do this, but we'll get into that a bit later on. Now, if we look in the DZ folder, you'll see a bunch of different folders relating to different aspects of the game. So characters, animals, AI, structures, weapons, etc. If we look in the characters folder, we'll see a list of different items related to the character themselves. So let's just take a look in tops, for example. And here you can see we have 
P3D files, a config CPP file, and these P3D files are the model files for the items in game. So you've got firefight ground, female, male, hoodies, etc. etc. If we just do a bit of um, cleanup here, uh, you want P3Ds to be opened with Object Builder, which is your tools. This is just to make things um, load easier. What I do is I will go right click, open with, choose another app. I want to always use this app to open P3D files. You won't see this, but what we can do is if we go to more apps, look for files on the PC. Now, if we look for our tools folder, and the easiest way to do that is to go to the same directory as the game. Copy that, paste that in here, and uh, go back a folder, and then you've got Daisy Tools there. In the bin folder, you'll see all the different programs highlighted. We want to go to Object Builder and select objectbuilder.exe. Click OK. This will give us an error because it's a binarized file that we can't open, but if we close this down, now you can see that all P3D files will use Object Builder to open. This is if you create your own models, it saves you having to open Object Builder, find the file, etc, etc. We can do the same thing for the image files, in this case PAA files, uh, you can see here the PAA files are all different um, files related to different types of clothing. These are basically the image textures that the game uses in order to display textures on items. Same principle again, right click, open with, choose another app. Always use this app to open PAA files, more apps, look for another program. Again, we're gonna paste that in there, go up a level, daisy tools, bin, image to PAA you will find textview.exe. Click OK and that'll open up in textview. This again is just for ease of access as you can see all the PAA files now related to the textview program. Again it's just for ease of access you can double click them and open them up. Okay so now we're going to look at some of the other tools available in Daisy Tools. Uh, we're going to briefly touch on these because don't really need to know too much about them at this point but object builder is used for when you're importing models you're creating your own models um, as assigning different aspects of the model but that's a bit more involved maybe something we'll touch on further down the line add-on builder allows you to pack your files into a pbo for use in game publisher allows you to post it to your steam workshop so other people can download them you can download them and use them in game. Economy editor is for changing things like tiers, animal spawns, player spawns, creating new tiers. Again that's something that's going to be further down the line. DS utils allows you to create a key to sign your mods. All mods need to be signed. Uh, they'll create a key which anyone using your mod will require that key. Image to PAA is a batch image converting tool. It allows you to convert multiple files into PAA files. If you've got a mod which has multiple textures, you can uh, tell it to look in a specific directory and convert all files in there to PAA files. TextView <clears throat> is the image converter to create to convert back and forth from PAA to PNG. CFG Convert allows you to unbinarize config files. You shouldn't really need to worry about that. Um, because we will be using the vanilla config files to build our mods in the future. There are other tools you can download, namely my Kiro tools. Uh, this is these files here. <coughs> Excuse me. PBO project is the same as add-on builder. It allows you to pack your files into uh, a mod. It gives you a few more options. Um, some people find it more reliable when it comes to texture files, uh, things like your RB mats. Um, Eliteness allows you to explore models um, for specific information which you may need further down the line when it comes to retexturing and Extract PBO allows you to unpack an existing PBO into readable information. This is useful for mods that allow you to retexture. You can 
look at how the mod is set up in the config, what sort of um, settings are in the mod, its script files, things like that. Again, that's something that's a bit more advanced. Um, one other thing you can install is Notepad++. This is an improved version of Notepad, uh, generally for coding. It's got uh, options for different languages. Um, you can install plugins to compare files, JSON tools for validation, XML tools for validation. There's, there's a bunch of things you can do with this just to make your life a little bit more easier when it comes to editing config files and things like that. As you can see, that's my little script there. <coughs> you didn't see that, right? You didn't see me, right? In the next episode, we will look at retexturing a vanilla item in game and how you set up the config where you find all the necessary information if you're interested in continuing on then please check the next video and if you wouldn't mind subscribing liking all that jazz that would be great anyway until next time peace out